Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be talking about a question that a lot of people have been asking me and that is which character do I boost? Which Shadowlands pre-order package there is an associated 120 character boost and all of a sudden people are so confused about which healer is going to be fun, which DPS should I go with, which tank is going to be fitting my playstyle and I wanted to make a video that's going to overview my choices based on the community perception, based on class fantasy, based on which basically classes I find interesting and which classes I would boost. So we'll be talking about all of the roles. Keep in mind that even if you're a new player coming into coming into World of Warcraft or maybe healing, DPSing or tanking, a lot of the times people want to play the class that is perceived as the best, even though you don't have to play it. But it kind of sucks if you're getting declined for Mythic Plus content because of your class. So community perception is going to shape this list. So first of all, Keep in mind, I probably will do a healer or more in-depth healer video in the next few days. If you want to see it, leave a comment below. But first of all, let's start with healers. And the healer that I would boost, first of all, I play all the healing specs, all the healing classes. So I'm not going to boost this because I already have it. But I would totally go with Restoration Druid. Resto Druid probably right now is regarded as one of the most popular healers. And that is mainly to do with their performance in Mythic Plus content. I'm sure you have heard a lot of people saying like, oh, which healer is strong right now? Resto Druid. Resto Druid has been dominating healer performance or healing meta for the whole BFA expansion. And a lot of people who are tending or want to go into healing, they consider Mythic Plus as their primary, you know, enjoyment source. And Resto Druid is so goddamn good. And there's multiple reasons for that. But I'm not only including Restoration Druids in this list because they're considered overpowered. I'm including them because of the fact that they're probably the most fun healers, in my opinion, in Mythic Plus content, because of how they deal with healing, damage, utility, and all of those things. You will never be bored as Resto Druid if you enjoy healer DPS. Now, I know for a fact a lot of people who do tend to play healers, they don't want to DPS, but if you do like Feral Affinity, Feral Affinity is so fun in Mythic Plus, because all of a sudden you'll be applying healing overtime abilities or HOTS to deal with healing. You'll also be probably applying dots or damage over time abilities like Moonfire or Sunfire to help with party's DPS. And on top of that, you also have Feral Affinity to apply bleeds. So now you have multiple different abilities that you can keep track of and maintain. And, you know, you're never going to get bored of it. If you don't want to deal damage, if you don't want to deal bleeds, you can just apply HOTS, heals over time. And they're going to get stronger the more HOTS you have. And that's going to leave you time with, you know, maybe watch Netflix or something, whatever. But it is an insanely satisfying playstyle and I urge anyone who enjoys Mythic Plus pushing to actually try out Resto Druid. Not only they're strong, but they're also they're really fun. You also have to keep in mind that they have tons of utility with things like Orsog Vortex, Typhoon, they have Battle Res. And if you kind of get bored of the healing, Druid class offers Boomkins who are perceived to be very good in Mythic Plus and raiding environments. Guardian Druid can really speed up your queuing times as a tank and you can play Feral to do, you know, Feral stuff. You know, there is the barrels still have a spot somewhere in the game. So now let's look at some of my tanking choices. And the tank that I would boost right now would probably be Brewmaster Monk. Brewmaster Monk is perceived as one of the best tanks in Mythic Plus environment and raiding content. And just the whole class fantasy of Stagger is so intriguing to me because Stagger is something that allows you to take these massive hits. And instead of getting one shot like all the other tanks, You'll just take it like damage over time. And there is some key abilities that you have to play around with. As a brewmaster, you have iron skin brew and you also have purifying brew. And all of a sudden you have to decide, do I want to increase the amount of stagger damage I can take with iron skin brew? Or do I want to remove some of that stagger with purifying brew? So there are some meaningful choices. Again, the general rule of thumb is that you keep a maximum uptime of Iron Skin Brew and you kind of use the excess charges on Purifying Brew. So there is still some meaningful choices to be made when playing Brewmaster, but the stagger mechanic, again, it just feels so cool to be able to soak up these massive hits on top of the insane utility in terms of Ring of Peace. Ring of Peace is so fun when you're playing with like Necrotic and you're trying to reduce the amount of Necrotic or drop Necrotic stacks. A good Ring of Peace can really help you out. On top of that, you're super mobile and you also have some really cool essences. You're one of the few classes that uses Conflict and Strife. The PvP essence is a major, especially in Mythic Plus content, which makes your Purifying Brew 
and AoE DPS ability. Who doesn't want more AoE DPS? So all of a sudden, Brewmaster seems like a pretty fun tank to play, but I have to include an honorable mention to a Blood Death Knight, because Blood Death Knight is so different from every other tank in terms of the amount of self-healing that you can provide. There is something about playing a tank that doesn't require a healer. Now, in higher content, you'll notice that Blue DKs are actually quite squishy. The nerves that happened in the last previous patches are quite severe. But overall, you can do some insane amount of healing and all of a sudden you can start competing with your healers in the group and then start leaving comments on YouTube videos that did not mention Blue DK as the best healer. Because I know you love doing that. But overall, I do have to mention Blue Death Knights because they're so different. Who doesn't like to be healed up to full from 10%? with one single global cooldown. So I feel Blue Decay has its own separate niche that seems very fun, but Brewmaster is also a very strong tank and also a very fun tank to progress in Mythic Plus and raiding content at this given time. Let's talk about the DPS and specifically many DPS. And I always wanted to boost a Havoc Demon Hunter because so many times I've heard the same thing over and over again. I'm doing so much more damage or it's so much easier to deal damage with my Havoc Demon Hunter alt that is low geared compared to my higher item level main. A lot of the times people consider Havoc as an easy class or easy mode class for the whole of BFA. And there is a lot of reasons for that. But first of all, their viability in Mythic Plus and Raids is insane. They've been strong for the whole of BFA expansion. They've been one of the strongest melee or DPS classes in Mythic Plus. They've been one of the mandatory DPS classes in raids because they provide that 5% extra magical damage debuff to the raid. And considering that a lot of raids bring ranged, Havoc has always been mandatory even for that world first content. It's probably one of the most overpowered or perceived as overpowered classes in a lot of the content right now. A lot of people will talk about the simplicity of Havoc Demon Hunter rotation and they'll tell you hey, I'm dealing so much damage with relatively little effort. And there is some fact to it because, you know, the single dagger rotation and AoE rotation does rely on I-Beam. I-Beam is used in multiple different scenarios. It is now considered to be meme beam. But you can see why people enjoy this class so much. Now, if you really think about it, the rotation might be relatively simple. It's hard to master any class. A lot of the classes in the game do have simple rotations so it's hard to compare them to a lot of other specs but generally speaking the rotation is not too hard but it is one of those classes that requires a lot of actions per minute it's one of the highest classes so there is a lot of there's a lot of buttons that you're going to be pressing so if you don't enjoy that kind of play style havoc demon hunter might not be for you in general if you see this from the chart that i'm listed here so there is a lot of advantages Havoc Demon Hunter is great for AoE, great for single target, it is great for Mythic Plus content, it has a lot of utility, it is used in raiding environment, it has insane mobility, there's a lot of class fantasy attached to the mobility, you have a lot of different things like Fell Rush, Glide, and overall, a lot of people will consider Havoc as a very good investment, but the disadvantage of it is that there's so many Demon Hunters or Havoc Demon Hunters in the game right now that it is hard to separate yourself from the rest of the pack. It is one of the most popular classes in BFA at this given point. I do have to give an honorable mention to another class and that is Rogue and more specifically Outlaw Rogue because Outlaw Rogue is one of the few specs in the game that is considered to be top tier for Mythic Plus content. It's also very strong for raids but overall if you're looking for a sneaky class with a lot of survivability, if you really want to provide that shroud of concealment, if you want that utility in Mythic Plus content, Outlaw Rogue is insanely, insanely strong right now. It has gotten some massive AoE nerfs in 8.2, and it's still one of the best classes in Mythic Plus content in terms of its uncapped AoE capabilities. If you're looking for a class with some insane AoE, Outlaw Rogue is, is a very good choice. Now, their single target is somewhat lackluster, but like I mentioned, there is a lot of need for that AoE DPS in Mythic Plus and their utility is strong, Shroud is strong, Outlaw is definitely an honorable mention here in terms of boosting capabilities. And lastly, I want to talk about range DPS and I'm only going to be talking about one range spec in particular because I feel it has a lot of distinct advantages 
when compared to new players playing ranged DPS or playing a DPS class in general, and that is Beast Mastery Hunter. I always wanted to boost the Beast Mastery Hunter because I feel the whole class fantasy of relying on your pet to do majority of your damage and being able, that's very, very important, being able to perform your full DPS rotation on the move sounds so enticing to so many players and there's a reason why Beast Mastery Hunter is one of the most popular specs for Hunters and in the game at this given point, especially in Raids and Mythic Plus content. So all of a sudden people enjoy this whole laid back aspect of hey i'm gonna sit back here do my full rotation on the move i can avoid this ability i can avoid this ability my rotation is not all that hard either so all of a sudden i have a lot of free time to do a lot of other things and it's not only me who finds this enticing because you can see it a number of beastmaster hunters in like mythic rating right now there is a lot of them so there is a lot of class fantasy attached to beastmaster hunter it can be annoying at the same time to rely on your pet's AI because it can't bug out, it can maybe do something else that you don't want it to do. So there is some negativity attached to a class that relies fully on its pet, but overall I feel there is direct advantages to solo players, especially people who don't want to group up or do world content. There is a direct appeal of having a personal tank in every content that you're doing. So overall, I do feel that Beastmaster Hunter is a very appealing choice. And this kind of summarizes all of the classes that I find enticing in terms of boosting capabilities. A lot of the classes here are based on community perception. They're viewed as good or really good for Mythic Plus or rating content. You will not have issues finding a groups with the classes that I listed in the video. And on top of that, I feel those classes are quite interesting. And hopefully I've listed all the advantages and disadvantages and maybe I've made up your mind about which class you're going to boost. Let me know which class you're going to use your boost on. If this video helped you, if this video provided with additional information. And if you enjoyed the content, please do subscribe. It really helps out the channel and helps me to do more videos like this. Thank you guys and I'll see you in my next video.